Okay, so in our last video, we got the slider kind of working. We got dynamic images being put into the source dynamically. And so now what we're going to do is I'm going to put some images in and let's get the swiper working. So I've done a little bit of cheating and what you can see I've put in a plugin called idangerous.swiper. If you head over to idangerous and you download their swiper, it's free. It's a really nice touch swiper. Um, but really this plugin that we're building is built to work with any slider. You can put any slider in this and it should, with a little bit of tweaking, work. But this one seems to work really well for me. So you can go download it here. They've got a huge API to check out. There's a lot of options and uh, it's a really cool slider. So what I've done is I've put the JS file here inside the JS folder. I've put the CSS that it comes with inside my CSS folder. And let's go and link these two up. So we're going to put these in here. So we've got our script there, and let's add in idangerous.swiper.css. Save. Okay. And you can see I've added some images in here. So you can see I've put some images inside our image folder. Image one, two, and three. So now we've got three images that we can slide between. Now that we've got these images here, um, let's go into our spslider.js. And what we're going to do is create a new function called apply slider. We're going to pass it the element that's going to be wrapping and the settings, of course. Now as a bare minimum, what we're going to do is, all we're going to do is we're going to extend the settings object with what I'm going to call uh, hard-coded options. And so I'm going to use a few options here that are um, part of the, the swiper that we're getting that I don't need the user to set. So for example, I want keyboard control to be true. And by the way, you can get all of these options here under the usage and API. There's a lot of a lot of options. And so just scroll through there and you can check it out. Um, but what we're going to do over here is we're going to set keyboard control to true. I'm going to have loop set to true automatically. And we'll leave that as it is. Now we've passed in the L, which is actually going to be just self from up here. Um, and we've got the settings. So what I'm going to do with the element that we're passed is I'm going to create a new swiper. And we're going to add the swiper with it, with the settings that were passed. So now these settings also have the hard-coded options in them as well. So really what we've done is we've appended these to these. And anything that the user puts in index.html, if they put loop true or false, it will also be accepted by uh, the plugin. So it's just an extension. And then we're going to go up here and we will say that uh, swiper equals apply slider. And we'll pass itself, which is the element that we're passing to the, to the plugin, and settings. And instead of returning self now, we're going to return swiper. And we're going to hope it works. So let's save that. Let's head over to our index.html and refresh. And it's not working. It has no method swipe. Okay, let's see what this is. Ah, swiper. There we go. Save, refresh. Okay, so now we've got something here. Uh, you can see that something's happening and uh, we've got a little bit of sliding action, but it's really ugly and I'm not sure what's happening. So let's dig in here. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually set the height and the width of the swiper slide. So the swiper slide here and the swiper wrapper um, are part of this eye dangerous swiper. And so what we need to do is we're going to set those. And remember, we have the height from the width and the height that are being passed in the settings. So before even the hard-coded options, what we're going to do is get the elements children. And so for every swiper slide, that's a child of this div here. So remember, we've got this div of test. 
So for every swipe or slide, we're going to set the height to settings.height, and we're going to set the width to settings.width. Pretty easy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the actual swipe or container itself. Same thing. Height, settings.height, and width, settings.width. Arguably, this should probably go above here. Okay. Let's see if that helped us at all. Not yet? Okay. Ah, well, let's think about it. We've actually set our height to that absurd height here. Let's set our height and our width to 300 by 200. And let's see what happens. Okay, so that's a little bit more manageable. We've got something here. And you can see behind here, right up there, that we've got an actual, it's happening within this div, but it's just kind of overflowing. So we need to set that container to not overflow. So let's set this swipe or slide. Don't really need that yet. And we'll hide the overflow. Refresh. Okay, we're getting there. Ah, okay, you know what we're gonna do? One thing I forgot to do is actually add a class here, and this is gonna be our swiper container. So if we save that, let's take away this red border here. Let's refresh. Here we go. So now we've got a nice little slider that's looping through all of our slides. Also works with left and right arrows. And we're getting all this data. And you can see, again, look how simple our HTML is. There's nothing there. Even test is gone. We could even take this away and it would be functioning. So in our slider, let's just run through what we've got. We're getting our data, storing it here. We're then creating our slides dynamically. We're putting the slides in the HTML, and then we're applying the Swiper plugin to that element, and then we're just returning that we're returning that element again. And so that's all it takes, right there. And so as you can see, thus far we can use this plugin with any platform. It doesn't have to be just SharePoint. All we need to do is switch out how we're getting this data. So that's the beautiful part about this: is it can work with anything, just a MySQL database, anything just a basic slider. So essentially what this is, is a wrapper around any slider that you like. I personally like this one, but it could, it could wrap around anything. Now just to make this a little bit more interesting, what we're going to do is add some navigation arrows to this. So if within format data, we're going to say, we're going to create a new, a new uh, variable called pagination. And so we'll create two uh, links here. One's going to be swipe nav left. We'll say left. And one will be swipe nav right. Right. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, let's just say result equals pagination plus slides. We're just concatenating these two, these two HTML strings together. And instead, we're going to return the result. Okay, let's save that. Refresh. So now we've got a left and a right clicks and they don't do anything, so we need to hook those up. So, what we'll do is over here under Apply Plugin, or Apply Slider, we're going to just do a little bit of jQuery to select those links. And remember how we store the swiper in a variable here? This is where it comes into play. There's actually an exposed API here where we can just say swipe previous. And we'll do the same thing for swipe right. We'll just say swipe next. Save that. And let's refresh over here. Now when we click right and left, these little buttons function quite nicely. But let's make them look a little bit better. So let's go over to style. And I'm going to copy in a bit of CSS here. I know it's cheating, but that's how it goes. So let's see if that works. So we're setting our swipe nav. We're going to put them positioned absolutely halfway down the slider. And we're going to give them a background and, and things like that. So let's refresh here. Now we have these nice little arrows. And these images are over here, left, right, just a couple of PNGs. So now we have a really nice functioning slider. 
as you can see, we'll be able to update the HTML in here to include the title, you know, the caption. We can make this into a link. Let's so make this into a link here. Okay, so when we refresh, oops, refresh, now you can see when we hover over this, we go to Amazon.com. There we go. Back. This one will go to eBay and Facebook. So now we've easily added a link here. Same thing with caption, we'll be able to do that. So let's go down one line and we'll just add in a span. And we'll just put our caption in here. Except I think I called it title. So let's refresh. So our title is not showing, and it's probably because we set the width and the height of the slider to be the exact width and height of the of the images. So let's just make it a little bit bigger, 250. And when we refresh, now you can see the caption below. The caption stays with the picture as we loop through. So that's the basic functionality of the plugin. The next what we'll do is actually integrate this in with SharePoint.